I find myself glancing at mom's immense door mirror with the long royal blue dress, thrilled for May 20th to come, like every other high school girl is for the arrival of their senior prom. I've watched so many movies of student senior year, with their homecoming queens, prom, and all the graduation parties. I am delighted that now it's my turn. After all, I thought I would end up graduating in Mexico. I was born in a small town called Tarimbaro in Michoacan, Mexico. I really can't remember much about my life in Mexico because I was brought to Minnesota when I was only three years old. My very first time flying on a plane, I was so young and from what I was told, I wasn't even scared. My parents left Mexico when I was about a year old to work here. They had plans of just working for a while and going back as soon as my little sister was born. But once she did, they decided they wanted us to live here. I came with my grandma. As soon as we got here, I went to live with my parents, but still got to see her very often. Later on, I went to kindergarten. I will never forget my very first day of school. I walked in that loud, colorful classroom. Our names were in the desk, and I remember sitting at the wrong one. I was so nervous and I didn't understand anything. It was so embarrassing. Since my parents didn't know the language, neither did I. And that is why my very first days of elementary school were very difficult. I then made friends, Luis and Reina. They knew both languages, so they were the ones that helped me out. By halfway through first grade, I knew how to speak, read, and write English. I loved living in St. Paul, enjoyed going to school and getting to see all my friends. When I was 13 years old, my grandma needed to go to Mexico for some medical exams. I thought it would be a good idea to go along with her, thinking it would only be for a couple weeks. Things didn't turn out as planned, and we had to stay for a long time. I didn't want to leave her alone, so I talked to my parents and decided I wanted to stay with her. Eventually, I ended up staying for about five years. There were days in which I was homesick. Life in Mexico is so different than in the US. The houses are all made with brick walls, some aren't even painted. In the town where I lived, everyone lives close to each other in a small neighborhood. The city is always super busy and there are crazy drivers. Unlike here, most people get around in metrobus, taxis, or walking. As soon as I started going to school and made friends, I liked it a little more. Although I knew Spanish, I had to adapt having all my classes in Spanish and improve my spelling and grammar. When I turned 16, I started working after school at a small family business that my uncle had of fertilizers for plants. I helped him by being on track on what he had to pay the bills and some accounting issues. I learned to love Mexico and everyone around me. My favorite holiday of the year was the Carnival, which was a festival made each year in February. People from towns nearby went and some TV channels even went to record. It was a crowded day and they did fundraisers for a Carnival Queen. There were also drinks all day. Later on in October 2016, I returned to Minnesota with the difference that now I am living in Monsview. I was grateful to come back to my childhood home, but that didn't keep me from feeling doleful when I left my life in Mexico behind. Now I learned many new things and value the opportunity of living in two different countries, and I'm grateful for this big experience. The beginning was harder than I thought. I had to finish my first senior year in high school with no friends and the first semester started. I was edgy about, after all, here is where I wanted to live permanently and where I plan on finishing a career. Finally, I am enjoying my last weeks of high school with friends and many feverish activities coming up.